Good afternoon and welcome back to Dick Price Stadium in Norfolk, Virginia for today's broadcast on the NSU and MEAC Digital Network as we welcome in our audience on ESPN3. Today's game features the Spartans of Norfolk State and the Aggies of North Carolina a and Hello everyone, I'm Ross Gordon and I'm joined by Wu Bay Gabre as Norfolk State comes into this contest 1-4 overall, 0-1 in the conference play after a tough loss, 30-28 last week. To Florida a and right here at Dick Price Stadium. North Carolina a and won at home last week. They are winners of three ball games this year with their only loss coming to Duke at Duke earlier in the season. The second game of the season, Aggies knocked off Delaware State last Thursday in a runaway. It wasn't close, 37. Nothing was that final score led by Jamaine Martin, who had four touchdowns in that ball game. When we come back, we'll talk in and bring in uh, Wu Bay Gabre and also get you set for kickoff as we'll take this break right now on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. The future in you. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium as we get set for kickoff as the coin toss has uh, taken place. We look now to our sidelines to get you set for today's ball game. The North Carolina a and Aggies coached by Sam Washington. Again, he is in his second season as head coach of the Aggies. 13-3 and overall as the head coach. Again, MEAC championship last year as well as the Celebration Bowl championship. On the other side, Norfolk State's Coached by Latrell Scott, Coach Scott, in his fifth season at Norfolk State, 17 and 32 overall, 42 and 41. His overall record as the as a head coach between here, Richmond, and Virginia State. On the side, the player to watch for North Carolina A&T, John May Martin. Again, we talked about him earlier in the ball game. 70 carries this year, 543 yards, 7.8 yards per carry. He has eight touchdowns on the season to lead. North Carolina A&T's rushing attack, 7.8 yards per carry. So he gets it done against FBS and FCS opponents as well. For Norfolk State, the player to watch is the quarterback, Jawan Carter. And he leads at Norfolk State and everything. As he goes, this Norfolk State offense goes. Carter, one of the better passes in the conference, throws it at about 63%. Over 1,000 yards already this season, 10 touchdowns, 5 interceptions on the year. His longest is 57 yards. He has a 201-yard average on the season. And again, if you look at it, these are two teams that are trying to really, really try to stay in the top of the things in the conference race. You know, as good as these teams are, Wu Bay, two losses might not be enough. To stay in that race you know i was talking about it earlier you know this is basically a playoff game in, in, in some aspects you know the spartans with already one loss and you're right two games can put you back um you know t really back in the, in the conference race so you want to get this win against a really good a and t that's easier said than done against a really good a and t team a and t with one of the better return games in the conference as well led by corey banks he'll be back deep to return the kickoff also to Mon cook will be back to return the kickoff as Cook will stand on the right hash Banks will stand on the left Norfolk State will wear their home green jerseys with gold bottoms and green helmets 
The Aggies will come in with their white tops and blue bottoms with their blue helmets here as we get set for action. Again, Norfolk State, what's going to be key today for Norfolk State and Blue Bay to get a victory? Uh, more pressure on the quarterback, Ross. Last in the MEAC in sacks. Um, only three this year. Coach Scott talked about how that can create some more turnovers, either pressures or sacks. And, of course, the obvious, Ross, containing Martin, who leads the conference in rushing, eight touchdowns. He's a complete back. He's fast and he's physical. Uh, uh, you know, different contra contrast from Cohen, Tariq Cohen, who was in the NFL. Um, he's a different, si different type of back, Ross. But this is a great opportunity, like we said, Ross, for the Spartans to make a statement in the MEAC to get a good win against a team like this. We're getting set for action as Ryan Richter will tee the ball up. Again, back deep is Corey Banks and Timon Cook. Again, the Spartans moving from right to left on your radio dial. North Carolina A&T from left to right. Solid crowd on both sides as we get set for kickoff today. Only other game in action right now. Harvard leading Howard 23. That one's early in that contest as Richter gets this one back deep. And it will bounce around three yards deep in the end zone and through the back of it. And a and will start this drive at their own 25-yard line. Again, the Aggies start off on offense. Getting pressure on, on, uh, on Carter is the key. Only three sacks so far this year, Ross. And all of them belong to defensive end. Chris Myers, the redshirt junior transfer from Middle Tennessee. He'll be out there in the base defensive look for Norfolk State. As Carter will stand in the pistol. Martin will stand around one yard behind him as A&T sends three wideouts. The Spartans will load the box. And the handoff will go to Martin. Martin stutter steps in the backfield, has room to run, cuts inside, picks up five yards before he's taken down. On the stop for Norfolk State. Well, you saw the ability of Martin, that lateral movement, stop and go cut. On the stop for Norfolk State was Nyree Crindley as the Aggies get back to the line of scrimmage quickly. Same formation. And again, same plays. The handoff goes to Martin. Martin stacked up at the line of scrimmage, but he powers his way forward for a first down to the 36-yard line. Well, that time he used his power. That's why he's a, he, you know, first run was a fast run. This was a physical run. And that's a first down. That's the first first down of the ball game. And A&T moving at their own 36 again. Play action. Carter looking downfield. Pass is going to be overshot. Good coverage down the field as Corey Blanks. Banks, excuse me, was the intended receiver. And Carter just airmailed it just a little bit. It'll be a second down on the first attempt through the air for the Aggies. We saw some man coverage there. Nice coverage there by Bobby Price. The safety for Norfolk State. As Martin gets the handoff in between the tackles. He stopped up as he picks up two yards. Nice job there by the Spartans. Interior of not allowing the cutback lane for Martin. Uh, again, Crinley was there. Also there for the Spartans is Remy Feltz. And the Spartans now will bring out their nickel package. As the back in the backfield. Now is Baker. As Carter sends three wide receivers to the new side. Looking downfield. Pass is going to be incomplete. He sidearmed the pass intended for Lockhart. The tight end on the drag route. Nice coverage there downfield as the pressure was being brought by Nod Nigel Chavis. And that will bring up a fourth down. And a punting unit will come on for a &T. Just like we talked about pregame, putting pressure on the quarterback, making it uncomfortable. The Spartans need more of that today. Martin, three carries for 13 yards. Carter 0 for 2 on drive number one. And we'll see the punting unit come out for North Carolina a &T. Michael Rivers, the six-foot sophomore, will come out. The punt at 39 yards per punt on the year. For the Aggies as the kick is away. Talbert waiting Back deep as he'll see this one bounce. And Talbert nearly loses the handle of the football. And he's lucky what happened was it was on the sideline. And he goes out of bounds. And it will be Norfolk State football at the 22-yard line. And we'll see the offense onto the field for the first time for Norfolk State. Ball is spotted at the 23-yard line. Where it'll be first as the Spartans will come out. And we'll see Jawan Carter. 
Another solid day throwing the football over 300 yards last week for Carter. Also had a touchdown. The Spartans are out without freshman Kevin Johnson today. As he has an upper body injury as the Spartans go to the air quickly. Justin Smith comes up with the first reception. And he's quickly tackled by Mac McCain as it's a pickup of about three. Yeah, you'll see more of Hewlett and Savage today without Johnson. As the Spartans will send three wide receivers out in the formation, two to the far side, one to the near. McElhaney also not into today's ball game. He's out with injury as Carter looks downfield. Pass is going to be in, in, intercepted. Ball is intercepted at the 35-yard line. Not sure. And Carter was looking in the RPO there down the field looking up the scene. I don't know if it was some miscommunication between he and DK Metcalf. He was looking up the seam there. Metcalf, excuse me, D DK just ran up the field there. I don't know if he saw. I don't know if he's. I don't know if Carter saw the. I don't know if Carter saw the defender there, but the ball will be spotted at the Norfolk State 36-yard line, as that pass was intercepted by Najee Reams. At the 36-yard line, so it'll be a first down now for a and And out comes Carter and Martin. As Carter handed off to Martin running left side this time. Martin with a head full of steam, and it's just him and Quinterly to the end zone, and Quinterly will take him out of bounds before he gets into the end zone. But it'll be a first down, big pickup there by the Aggies. And they're inside the five with the first down and goal from the two-yard line. Well, you saw Martin. That time there was speed, Ross, on that run. Outside run gets to the corner and gets close to the end zone. 34-yard pickup there for Martin. He's got all 47 yards today for the Aggies. Here is they're now two yards away from the end zone. Carter under center as the Spartans crowd the line of scrimmage. As the handoff will go to Martin, Martin dances his way into the end zone for the score. And the Spartans and Aggies now see points on the board, and the Aggies will get on the board with Jamey Martin's ninth touchdown of the year. This one from two yards away, and the Spartans now trail 6-0. Taking advantage of the turnover, Ross. Got a short field. Martin with two carries, touchdown for the, for the Aggies. Again, just bouncing it outside. Not a lot of numbers there defensively. Quinterly did all he could to keep him out of the end zone. But the Aggies punch it in one play later with Martin. Again, his ninth touchdown of the year. The extra point by Ruiz is on the way up, and it is good. 7 nothing. your score with 12-16 left to go here in quarter number one. Media timeout. We'll take a timeout on the field as, again, the Norfolk State trails North Carolina A&T 7 to nothing. We'll take that timeout with you as you're looking at MEAC football on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. Stay centered with available ProPilot Assist. Presenting the Nissan Altima. Impossibly smart. Hello and welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. You score North Carolina A&T. 7-0 after the two-yard plunge by Martin to give the Aggies the lead. They score after the interception and the offense of Norfolk State will come back onto the field. Uh, looking to get something going. Trailing now for the first time with 12-16 left to go here in quarter number one. The kick by Ruiz is away. And Talbert will run underneath it at the 12-yard line. And rush left side. Talbot with a little bit of room to run. Steps inside the 35. Gets taken down as he gets to the 39. It'll be a first down for the Spartans there. Good field position. I was going to say, Ross, good field position now for the Spartans. They have to put something together on offense here. And get some points on the board. So here comes Carter after the interception. He looks to get things going again for the Spartans with Savage. No, looks like Hewlett in the backfield. Three wideouts to the top of the formation. As the handoff will go to Savage. It is Savage in the backfield. He picks up two on the first now. As he gets to the 41-yard line. 
tackle made there by Michael Branch, the defensive lineman. Yeah, without Johnson today, Ross, you'll see how much of a change of pace the Spartans are doing the running game. As Carter quickly back to the line of scrimmage, Mac McCain definitely offsides. As Carter drops back to pass, avoids one rusher, looks downfield, throws it downfield, had a man, but just couldn't get it out to him. And nice job of avoiding pressure there by Carter, but he just couldn't link up with his receiver, James. Yeah, it was a great elusiveness that time by Carter to get away from the defender. Had James just had to rush the throw and was incomplete. As Carter comes back to the line of scrimmage, three wide outs to the far side, one to the near. Carter drops back to pass with time, steps up in the pocket. Looking downfield, pass is going to be complete for the first down inside North Carolina a and territory. As the tight end found himself open, working his way out with Sean McFarland. You know, whenever the Spartans use their tight ends, they're always successful. That time he saw his tight end, McFarland, in the middle of the field for a first down. As the Spartans come back out, three wide outs, two to the near side, one to the far. Savage in the backfield as Hewlett comes in motion and it's going to be a pitch out to Hewlett. Hewlett stopped in the backfield. Loss of about three on the play, maybe two. As again, that's where you, a lot of times you see the speed of Kevin Johnson, the freshman who's not into today's ball game. And you saw Hewlett have a step there, but a and closed Second it quickly. Okay, exactly. That's a Kevin Johnson type of play that time. That time he gave it to Hewlett. As Carter drops back to pass again, looking over the middle. He's going to get hit in the backfield, and he's going to get taken down inside and Norfolk State territory. That, was a that time Carter stood in the pocket, tried to go down the field, maybe a little too long, and he was sacked. That's Kadarius Kendrick. He comes up with the sack, and that makes it a third down and 19 now for the Spartans. Actually, third down and 18 for the Spartans. Big play receiver now, Ellington 6'6", six, six on the far side, Ross. As Norfolk State comes out, four wideouts. Carter drops back to pass. Stunt coming, Carter looking down the field. Pass is going to be complete out to Ellington. Ellington gets some of that yardage back. Inside the 45, down to the 43-yard line. Not enough for a first down, and we'll see the punting unit come out for Norfolk State. Yeah, he saw Ellington. Ellington just didn't get far enough to the sticks. So now it's going to be fourth down for the Spartans as they have to punt. And Richter will come out as a &T with a lot of players on the field there. As Richter get the punt off, it's high and it's short, and it'll bounce and take a a &T bounce into the end zone. Need your timeout. And it'll be a timeout taken on the field. We'll be back after this break on the BIAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. Nissan Altima, impossibly smart. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. 7 nothing your score. a and with the lead. As we come back to live action, we'll see Khalil Carter and in the backfield, Martin, as he scored on the last possession. It's going to be a quick pass out to Elijah Bell. Bell looking for space. Gets a nice block. And the first completion gets Bell seven yards out past the 25 to the 27. On first down, it'll be second down and a three for the Aggies. Well, we talked about Bell in pregame, Ross. 6'2", 221 pound receiver. Very elusive, good all-around receiver. 
pickup of six there for the Aggies as Carter looks over the defense. Now in the backfield is the backup, Kashawn Baker. And Baker picks up the first down out past the 30 to the 35-yard line. it will be another first down for the Aggies on the ground. Yeah, Baker looked like Martin on that run, just ducked behind his offensive line and got the first down. A little bit of a smaller back in is Baker, but has a lot of speed as he moves to the right of Carter. That's the Aggies have four wideouts, two split to either side. Carter will hand it off, and again, it's Baker trying to bounce it outside. He does. It gets taken down after he passes the 40-yard line to the 46-yard line. And again, the Spartans looked like they had him bottled up. But Baker did a good job of keeping his legs driving. Absolutely, Ross got the first down, went outside after a few hits. And got it got the first down for the Aggies as Carter quick pass is going to be complete out in the flat but nice job they are making the play at the line of scrimmage by the Spartans Brandon Savage the younger brother of Aaron which will bring up a third down and we'll say three at the 42 yard line pass was complete to McDonald excuse me McDaniel and that will bring up a third down and three. The Aggies send a man in motion to the near side. Carter in the shotgun. And Bell in motion now. Carter, empty backfield, drops back, and it's going to be a quarterback design run. And Carter with a lot of room to run, picks up the first down in Norfolk State. Territory loses the football, and it's going to be picked up by Norfolk State. And Remy Phelps comes up with the football as it was stripped away by Nyree Quinterly. And the Spartans get the football. Quinley never gave up on it, Ross. Stuck with it. Got the fumble, and the Spartans pick it up. Quinley actually tackled the football there. He led the team in forced fumbles last year. Did a good job of coming up with that football. So now both teams with the turnover, the Spartans have the football at their own 45-yard line. Good field position as well for the Spartans. Great defensive play by the time by Quinley. Transfer from East Carolina, the Norfolk native, Lake Taylor High School. Gets the turnover. As the play was reviewed. And we have a turnover. Two wide receivers to the near side. One to the far for Carter who drops back to pass with time. Steps up, looks downfield. Has DK James. James running under it. And had it in his hands, but he couldn't hold on to it. Looks like he was trying to locate it, Ross. As he had his man beaten as Reams was the defender on the play. Reams said not today, but you are, in games like this, Ross, those are plays you have to make. You know, you know, he had he had the defender beat, just couldn't pull it down. As Carter put it on the money as he now sends the same formation out two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far, the handoff goes to the back into the backfield and we're going to have a flag thrown afterwards as Gerald Hewlett gets inside of anti territory to the 49 and he got hit hard oh man, not a good sign especially since you don't have Johnson today Ross and we'll hear what the officials have as the flag was thrown late we'll see what maybe a target and we'll see what the play is going to be personal foul targeting, targeting. Defense, number eight. The previous play is under further review. Joseph Stuckey, a linebacker, came in, led with his head, and said the officials as Hewlett on the field. Again, not a good sign with Kevin Johnson out of today's ball game with the upper body injury. And he will get up under his own power. Give it up, give it up on family. Number five, Jr. And the official will go to the replay to see what the verdict will be. And again, the guilty party there was Joseph Stuckey. And if this targeting penalty hand st stands, Stuckey will be out of the rest of this ball game and also out of the first half of next week's ball game, I believe. Oh, no, he'll be able to return 
first half of next week's ball game. And yeah, he does leave with his head. Oh yeah. Not a. Yeah, and without a care there, that wasn't. And the tough thing is, Hewitt was on his way down to the ground too. The tackle was made, which yeah. is tough. And, that's and, what, and you're right, Ross. That's what they say: defenseless, a defenseless uh, player. And that's definitely what Hewlett was going down to the ground. And Joseph Stuckey, the guilty party for North Carolina A and T. Again, this is a team that has uh, capable backups, but Joseph Stuckey leads his team in tackles. As again. Yeah, he led with his head. And the tackle was made by Kendrick, who's had a busy day today. And Ross A&T also leads the conference in rushing defense. So, I mean, this is another. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. Third down. Number eight can remain in the game. We saw two replays on that one, Ross. It looked like it was targeting to us, but no call on targeting. So, it would been a great opportunity for Norfolk State as well. They had 15 yards would have added on to that. So, you just have to get the explanation of that one day. Lead with the helmet, even though it looked like he hit him in the head with his helmet. Maybe there was another view that we had, and this should be a penalty against. North Carolina A&T. Offside. Defense. Number 93. That five-yard penalty will result in a first down. Jermaine McDaniel was the guilty party there for North Carolina A&T. The wind swirling now at the Spartans' back with 6.30 left to go in the quarter number one. The Spartans trail 7-0. Norfolk State with the first down. Two wide receivers to the near side. One to the far. As Carter... Drops back to pass with time. Looking downfield. Now runs out of it. Steps in. Will get positive yardage before he's taken down. A pickup of about three. Tackle made by Devin Harrell for North Carolina A&T. Good coverage downfield by the Aggies defense. I was going to say, Ross, you can see that the Spartans' emphasis is to go down the field, but the Aggies' defense is playing solid in the back end. That's Norfolk State again. will send three wide outs in this formation. Two to the far side, one to the near. Carter. We'll hand it off to Savage. Savage avoids one tackle. Gets to the 41 before he's taken down. Got back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. It'll be a third down situation for the Spartans. Good to see Savage back as well, Ross. I remember he got hurt against Virginia State. So no brace this time from what it looks like. It looks like he's running pretty well. On the sideline, they're working on Hewlett's ankle. Taping his ankle. Hopefully everything's all right there. As Carter will have a third down and seven. In the shotgun. Carter with time pass is going to be complete to Justin Smith. Smith brings it in for the first down inside the 30 to the 29-yard line against Mac McCain. And the Spartans move the football. Yeah, McCain, first team all conference. He's coming off an injury. Good play by Smith that time on a quick slant. As Norvig State, again, will come out. Four wideouts, two split to either side. Williams, the tight end, lined up in the slot. To the far side as the handoff goes to Savage. Rushing left side, Savage. Gets through a slight hole, picks up two down to the 27-yard line. It will be a second down and eight for the Spartans. Savage, the senior from Baltimore, just trying to find any crack he can get to get some yards on that rushing attack. With 4.35 left to go here in quarter number one. As Sam Washington said, uh, uh, holding the football is going to be big. And if you're Norfolk State, grinding out against this defense also might help as well as Carter drops back to pass. Looking out the flat, looking for Savage. He was wide open, and Carter kind of uh, overshot him a little bit. It'll be a third down situation. It's like Carter was just a little too quick on that one, Ross. You know, just he had Savage in the flat, just threw a little like he rushed the, the throw a little bit, and that might have picked up a first down, but it'll bring up a third down and eight now for the Spartans. Ball will be spotted at the North Carolina A&T 27. Carter drops back to pass. Blitz comes. Carter looking over the middle of the field, looking for James. Pass is incomplete. As James gets hit late. Pass is incomplete. 
And Coach Scott looking for another defenseless receiver there. Again, that's how nope. Carter rushed the pass, Ross. And James was open, and he's on the ground now. As James was coming over the middle, he was hit by Wilder there. And we'll see what Coach Scott decides to do. With the wind at his back, might be a makeable field goal opportunity. But you might also have an opportunity to keep your offense on the field as James sits up now, which is a good... The previous play is under review for targeting. And he runs to the sideline. This play is going to be reviewed as well for targeting. And with 4.17 left to go, Media time timeout out will on be the field. taken on the field. 7 nothing. you score North Carolina A&T, leads Norfolk State. The Spartans have the football at the A&T 28. We'll take a break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. Hello, After welcome. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. Fourth down. Hello and welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. As you heard, there was no foul for targeting from Rory Bernard. It's two. There was two replays for targeting. Now we'll see Josh Nardone from 30 from 44 yards out. Again, wind at his back. Nardone. Longest attempt of the year. Snap is down. The kick is up. It's high enough. It is long enough. It is up. And it is through. The Spartans are on the board. And they now trail by four, seven to three. That's the longest field goal of the year for Josh Nardone. You take points any way you get them, Ross. Three points on the board. You do want six in that situation, but I'm sure the Spartans will uh, love to have that, those three points on the board. Yeah, and again, you just got to continue to grind it out here against this A&T defense. And again, I think one big thing is the defense was on the field for some time. With 413 left to go, the Spartans... Juwan Carter, 4 of 7 today, throwing the football for 26 yards. Khalil Carter, 2 of 4 for 6 yards. The Aggies have rushed for 79 yards here today. And they've averaged 9.9 .9 yards per rush. The Spartans with negative 4 rushing yards here on 2 attempts today. I'm sure you get a heavy dose of, of Martin on this next uh, series for the Aggies. Again, they lead the, the conference in rushing offense. As Ryan Richter will come out. The kickoff back deep again is Banks and Cook. Cook stands on the left hash, Banks on the right. As folks are, the Spartans have eight yards rushing here today. 79 for North Carolina a and 85 total yards for a and 46 for the Spartans as Richter gets his toe into this one. And Banks will take it at around the one-yard line, running to the right side, Banks. Avoids one tackle on his way and past the 30-yard line before he's taken down by Richter. Yeah, Touchdown saving tackle by Richter. So good play by him because one more cut and I think he would have been gone. Solid form tackle there by the kicker. As the ball will be spotted. Inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. And again, the Spartans came up with a turnover on the last possession. A strip. From Nyree Crinnelly gave the Spartans the opportunity to put the points on the board. Both teams have scored after a turnover here today as Carter in the shotgun. Martin back in the backfield. He'll get the handoff. He runs left side this time. It's a lot of room to run again for, Car for Martin. Martin might have gotten a hold, stays on his feet, and bounces it outside, and he'll get into the end zone for the score. Well, we figured if Martin would get the ball, we just didn't think it was only going to take one carry for a touchdown for the Aggies. That's pretty quick. 13-3 now. You scored 353 left to go here in quarter number one. Well, he's as advertised, Ross. He's fast. He's physical. He gets he gets to the edge really easily. And uh, you saw the speed and the agility on that touchdown run. One play drive there as they'll look and see if he stepped out of bounds at any point of the run. And again, might have been a hold on the outside. Wasn't called. Maybe you got to try a little harder if you're the defensive back to 
and maybe get that uh, sell it a little bit more but again you see the speed and you see the power of of Martin with 353 left to go in at the quarter and they're going to count it now Martin with two touchdowns on the day give him 10 on the year and we'll see Ruiz come out to attempt the extra point try to make it a 14-3 ball game as the kick is up and it's blocked at the line of scrimmage and so it'll be a 10-point ball game as Deshaun Dixon gets the block and the Spartans with 353 left to go here in the quarter number two trail 13 to 3 and again Martin they're running down the sideline ran away from Bobby Price that was a hold as he got to the outside nice move there on Ivory Crinley and Crinley got stuck in his tracks and Martin Got down the sidelines for the touchdown. Is that Martin or Todd Gurley running that? He got the same number, same style, same haircut. And Martin, same results, I guess. <laughs> Martin now over 100 yards rushing today. Here in the first quarter. 116 to be exact. Two touchdowns. That was a 67-yard touchdown run. As Tolbert... Back deep to return the kick for Norfolk State. Also back deep is Raquan Smith. Might see some action as Smith will call for a fair catch. And the Spartans will have this one at the 25-yard line. After the fair catch. Nice job there by Raquan Smith. Uh, securing the football. And the Spartans will have the football at their own 25. Raekwon Smith coming from that talent-rich high school of Holland Springs, freshman, four state championships, Ross, in the state of Virginia, going for five this year. As Carter will come out in the shotgun, two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. As the Spartans trail by 10, 13 to three, Carter hands it off. And here's a big hole running over the right side trying to answer it is Smith, the freshman that you just mentioned. He's inside anti territory. He puts on the brakes, stays in bounds at the 15 yard line. And his first carry in college gets the Spartans a first down inside the 15 yard line. Well, you said he might get some carries, Ross. He got his opportunity, took full advantage of it. First carry gets a huge game for the Spartans, Ross. Raquan Smith, uh, again, a solid five now, 200 pound freshman. With his first carry of the day and the Spartans with the first down. Solid blocking up front as well at the 14-yard line. a and shows blitz as the handoff goes to Smith. This time he gets back to the line of scrimmage. And it will be a second down and 10 for the Spartans. So you got a change of pace back with Smith a bigger back with Hewlett. Savage and Johnson being more of a scat back, you know, but uh, this, you know, Smith looking great so far. They get him back to the line of scrimmage. Not much more as James comes in motion to the near side with eight on the play clock. Carter drops back the pass, looking out the flat, and here's Smith again. Smith avoids one tackle, leaps inside the five, where he might be about a yard shy of the first down. That time he saw Smith's agility and athletic ability. Third down. third down, and the Spartans will have a third down and two here. Nice job there by the freshman Raekwon Smith. Coming in and making some plays for the Spartans. Three wideouts to the near side, one to the far. Smith now, after that 62 yard carry. We'll give it a third down and one. Carter in the shotgun. Drops back to pass. Carter looking over the middle. Throws the ball to A&T. An interception. And Carter pumped, held it, and then threw it away. As the interception was made by Alex Wumba, the linebacker. And 
Don't know what Carter saw there. That's the second interception of the day for the Aggies. They'll have the ball inside their own 10-yard line at the 8. Now, Ross, I think on both interceptions, he just didn't see the defender. I mean, had a, had a man wide open in the end zone. Looks like the Aggies are playing some, some, tort, some sort of zone, and Carter just threw an interception, just didn't see the defender. So Khalil Carter and the a and offense back onto the field. It's Martin. Fresh off a 67-yard run. Now in the backfield with Carter as the man comes in motion. And it's going to be a jet sweep. And nearly getting taken down in the backfield is Banks. As the tackle was made. Draping down the line of scrimmage by Ricky Thomas with 138 left to go here in the first quarter. Again, Ross, turnovers and big plays. You know, you have to make those opportunities count against a team like a and these, the, these are the type of things that you can't let slip by in a big game like this because they're going to capitalize on things like things like that. Second down and four for a and a pickup of six for Banks. That's Carter. Sends Banks in motion again. This time the handoff goes to Martin. Martin. Nice job there, staying at home to Cephas Harden, and they might have stopped him there in the backfield. Nice job there by Harden with 110 left to go here in quarter number one. It'll be a third down and six. Might be a loss of two there on the play. A great containment that time by the, the Spartans' defensive line. Huge third down here for the Spartans. As we'll see, Bell line up in the backfield with Carter. Two wide outs to the far side, one to the near. As a, Carter, as a Spartan showing man coverage on the outside. That's Carter again with Bell in the backfield. And with 36 seconds to go here in quarter number one, a timeout's going to be taken by a t Timeout, North Carolina a t First charge timeout of the half, 30 seconds. Again, we've seen three turnovers here in the first half. Actually, in the first quarter, two by Norfolk State. Two interceptions by Carter, and then one uh, fumble by Khalil Carter. It's a 13-3 ball game in favor of North Carolina A&T, and the Spartans have a big third down situation here on defense. Lube. Yeah, I mean the, the turnover led to a touchdown for the Aggies, and you know, you know, in this one, the last interception it was deep in, in territory near the end zone. So again, turnovers against a team like A&T, you have to eliminate those type of plays because a team like A&T will capitalize on your mistakes. As the Aggies come out again, same formation before the timeout. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Now in motion to the far side. And now Bell will come in motion to the near side. Carter, empty backfield. Carter will take off as he picks up the first down. Before he's tackled by Karan Speller. 29 seconds to go here in quarter number one. Ross, that was the same play that the Spartans got the fumble on. And a and doesn't have to run another play here. As they can wait to the second quarter. Play clock at 20. Game clock at 7. And a and will... Wait till the second quarter as the ball will be spotted at the 20 yard That's line. We'll flip the field. The first quarter. We'll take a time out with AT leading 13 to 3 over Norfolk State on the MIAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. This is the quarter break. Rookie. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. 13 3 is your score. AT with the lead. Over Norfolk State, 164 yards of total offense in the first quarter for a and 116 for Norfolk State as the Aggies have the football first down and 10. Carter drops back to pass, looking downfield for Elijah Bell. Bell makes the catch, and he's inside Norfolk State territory as he runs out of bounds, and the coverage on the play by Richard Russell. A big pitch and catch there from Carter to... Bell and Bell with his first reception inside Norfolk State territory to the 27. Well, Bell, well, Ross, that's why Bell's on the NFL radar. Great play to adjust to the ball by uh, by Carter, the quarterback. A big gain for the Aggies. It's the longest pass play of the day for the Aggies. 
as Carter with Martin in the backfield. We'll drop back. Pass is going to be complete. Leslie Leslie with a convoy of blockers picks up nine yards inside the 20. They might give him credit enough for the first down and they will give him credit to the 18 yard line. There will be a second down actually for the Aggies. A second down and Bell with two receptions now 59 yards that was a 53 yard reception as again the same play Leslie with the reception picks up the first down to the 15 yard line it'll be a first down for the Aggies there now the Aggies going more up more up tempo Ross but now throwing the ball now not giving the ball to Martin showing Carter that he can go down the field as well I guess you have a receiver like Bell I mean you take your chances with that Leslie picks up a three on that play as the Aggies now will have a first down and 10 Martin in the backfield Carter looks out and the flat pass is going to be complete to Bell Bell avoids the tackle of Bobby Price slips out of that tackle inside the 10 yard line before he goes out of bounds at the nine and we have a stoppage of play momentarily but things kept rolling as Bell lost his helmet it's a pickup of about seven on the play be second down and three for the Aggies that play didn't look uh, like much coming out as the offensive line didn't really move on the play but it was a quick uh, pitch and catch there from Carter to Bell that's his second reception on this drive a six yard pickup as Carter lines up under center, hands it off to Martin in between the tackles. Martin skates his way inside the eight and down to the five-yard line, and it will be enough for a first down. It'll be a first down and goal for the Aggies. Yeah, the first run of the drive, and you give it to Martin. Martin gets the yardage needed for the first down. Carter now six of eight for 77 yards. It'll be a first down and goal for the Aggies. At the Norfolk State five yard line. Bell lines up in the slot to the far side. Leslie outside of him. One wide receiver to the near side. That's Banks. Caught in the shotgun. Martin behind him as Bell comes in motion. It's going to be a quick pass out in the flat. It's going to be complete enough for a touchdown. First touchdown reception of the day for Lockhart. The first touchdown pass. There a lot of movement there. And the Spartans got caught there. With the crossing route from Lockhart. And Lockhart gets into the end zone and makes it a 19-3 ball game. 12 minutes to go here in quarter number two. Well, you get caught because of the running game. It's been so effective. You get caught in the running game and they go out to the tight end in the flat. And they get an easy touchdown. As Ruiz will come out to attempt the extra point. Snap is down. The kick is up. High enough. Long enough. It is up and good. It's a 20-3 ball game. With 12 minutes to go here in quarter number two. Media timeout. Timeout taken on the field. We'll take it with them on the BAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. Impossibly smart. 23 year score as AT leads Norfolk State with 12 minutes to go in quarter number two as the Aggies. Get their first touchdown pass of the day. Lockhart with the five-yard reception from Carter, who is now seven of nine today for 82 yards and a touchdown. And most of his damage was done on that drive as the ball goes through the end zone. And the Spartans will get the football to start this drive at their own 25. Again, now throwing into the wind. Carter, who has two interceptions here thrown today, and he just uh, early in the game seems like he's struggling to get that rhythm. Yeah, I, th I think it's the rhythm, and you know, maybe some anxiousness as well, Ross. I mean, a couple of his passes were a little too early that I'm sure he would like to throw them, and you know, one of them resulted in, in an interception. But you know, you, he just has to calm down and play his game. Today, he is six of 12, two interceptions there. 47 yards as the handoff goes to Savage running right side not much doing there gets back to the line of scrimmage not much more 
you, know, you still want to establish the run, Ross, even though you do want to go down the field. But, you know, down 20 to 3, you got to take some shots. It's a little tough today with the wind blowing as hard as it is in the Spartan space now moving from left to right. As Savage gets the handoff running right side, he loses the football. And it's a scramble for it, and it looks like it might be picked up by A&T. Spartans' third turnover, Ross, of the game. Has recovered. And it will be a fumble, and it will be picked up by a &T. Coming up with the football is Kendrick. Kendrick's been busy today. He had the tackle on this drive. And the Spartans... Defense back against the wall again as the ball will be spotted at the 26-yard line. As that ball came out early, and it will be a loss on the play. As Howard forced the fumble, and Kendrick came up with it. And a &T back out onto the field with three wide receivers to the far side. In the backfield is Baker as Carter waits the snap. Play action. Carter looking downfield. Has a man in one play after the fumble. It's a, a touchdown there as Leslie beat his man on the play into the end zone. That's a second straight pass for a touchdown for Carter. As he beat his man, Devin Coles, on the play. No, no safety, Ross. Man to man. And uh, Ante took advantage of it. 26 to 3 down. You score with 11 24 left to go here in quarter number two. As Ruiz on to attempt the extra point to make it a 27 to 3 ball game. The kick is up and it is through. 27 to 3 is your score. Norfolk State trailing North Carolina AT as again the Aggies started off the ball game running the football, but. Khalil Carter over the last two drives has done the heavy lifting. There's been only one run over the last two drives, including that after the fumble. Carter again looking downfield. Coles was just on the back shoulder of Leslie and perfect pass. And Coles couldn't do much with it as Leslie gets into the end zone for the touchdown. That's the fifth touchdown pass of the year for Carter. His second today with 11.24 left to go here in quarter number two. The Aggies have already put up 14 points here in the second quarter. It also helps, Ross. You get a short field like that. You know, for them to punch it in. As this kick will be deep. And again, the Spartans will allow it to go through the end zone. And the ball will be brought out to the 25-yard line in the Flag is going to be thrown we have a on the field. as well. At the play, the ball is going to be spotted at the 25. We'll see what the penalty is. It came late. And after the play, correction, after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 33 of the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the succeeding spot. That is number 33's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. Jalen Bethea, the guilty party, on that play. And so, which would have been a first down at the 25-yard line for Norfolk State, has now turned into a first down at the 40-yard line of Norfolk State with 11.24 left to go here in the second quarter. Raquan Smith in now at tailback. As Carter awaits the snap, and he'll pitch it, and he'll keep it actually. Fakes the pitch, gets past the 45 to the 46, a pickup of six on first down. And one thing for the Spartans, they ran the ball okay against this A&T defense, which only allows 75 on the year. They have 76 now at this point, with 11 minutes to go here in the second quarter. They trailed 27 to three. Carter in the shotgun again. Smith to his right. As the handoff will go to Smith, running left side this time. Not much doing. Smith picks up one on the play. 
It'll be a third down situation now for the Spartans. Third down and three. Just almost have to get this on this pl play here, Ross. You don't, do not want to give the Aggies the ball back with this much time left in the half. Carter back to the line of scrimmage with four wide outs, two split to either side. Smith still in the backfield as Carter drops back the pass. Pass is going to be complete out to Justin Smith. Smith gets to the 50. He'll have enough for the first down. And generous spot, and the Spartans will move the chain. Good read that time by Carter. Saw Smith going over the middle. It looks like it was a slant pattern. He got the, the first down. As Norfolk State will have a first down and 10 from the 50 with 9.50 left to go here in the quarter. As a t has scored 14 points early as Carter drops back to pass. Pressure coming. Carter steps up in the pocket. The flag is going to be thrown. It's going to be a hold against the Spartans as Carter picked up two on the play. We'll get the guilty party. Holding. Offense. Number 66. 10 yard penalty. First down. It's going to be against Taro Lipscomb. And so that will back the Spartans up to the 40 yard line. So it'll be a first down and 20 now for Norfolk State. Again, turnovers and penalties can <laughs> dampen your day in football. And, you know, a costly holding penalty now for the Spartans. A pretty clean first half for both teams, though. That's just the third penalty of the day as Carter drops back the pass. Looking over the middle of the field. Pass is going to be dropped by James. That's his second drop here today. He at least would have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage there. But had that one in his hands and just bounced off his chest. And that looked like a case of running before you catch it. James is looking downfield and, and just didn't secure the ball and dropped it. Second down. As it'll be a second down and 20, Carter with Raekwon Smith to his left in the shotgun. As A&T starts to back up now, sending pressure over the middle pass. is going to be incomplete, looking for Talbot as the pressure came. Again from their front four by Leon Smalls, the defensive end, got to Carter. It'll be a third down and 20. That time Carter had no chance. The pressure was on. He had to get rid of it. 9.14 left to go here in the second quarter. 27-3 is your score. As Carter will survey the defense. Three wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Carter drops back to pass with time. Pass is going to be intercepted. The incomplete as Mac McCain... And Justin Smith fought for it. We'll see what the conversation is. One, one ref says it was intercepted. Or one says it was incomplete. And they will say it's intercepted. Ruling on the field is an interception by North Carolina A&T. First down. As I believe they will review it as all turnovers are reviewed. If it is an interception by McCain, if he did take it away from Justin Smith there, it will be the third touch. Media timeout on the field. It will be the third interception of the day for the Aggie defense. 27-3. Is your score, North Carolina a t with the lead. We'll take this the time out play, on the MIAC Digital and NSU Sports Networks. Nine oh nine left to go here in the second quarter. Official review underway as Mac McCain. And it looked like Justin Smith there 
were fighting for the football. Mac McCain came away from it. Don't know if it hit the ground or not or whether McCain came up with it cleanly, but it didn't look like After it was enough. After further review, the ruling on the field has been changed. It was an incomplete pass. Be fourth down and 20 at the 40-yard line. The clock will start on the snap. And again, one well, the officials come together and have a conversation and call it a interception on the field and it was enough there and again maybe the angle we saw just wasn't a, we didn't have the greatest angle but it will be a fourth down and so the Spartans dodge a bullet there and we'll see Ryan Richter come out and punt for the second time today and back deep to return the punt for North Carolina A&T is Corey Banks snap gets back to Richter Richter gets it away it's a high short kick again Punting into the wind is the Spartans as the ball was bounced. And it will take an A&T bounce and they will get it right around the 41-yard line where Mac McCain actually had that fumble or had that interception called back. So the Spartans defensively back out onto the field after surrendering two straight touchdown passes. Trying to get it right here. As Carter has started to warm up, especially through the air. Looks like they're going to go back to the passing game now. No Martin in the backfield for the Aggies. Carter in the shotgun. Looks downfield. Has Bell, and Bell looked like he held Aaron Savage a little bit as the Spartans had man coverage there. Savage was step for step with Bell, and it'll be a second down. As Baker checks in, Baker has two carries and 16 yards. Again, it's a 12-yard rush per 12-yard average per rush for A&T as they now look to the sidelines. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Again, that's Bell. He's matched up with Savage. As Carter will have it, he'll roll right side as. He dives inside Norfolk State territory for the first down to the 45. Well, that's the first time we've seen that all day. A little wrinkle for the Aggies. And that just adds to the running game percentages as Carter gets a good, a big gain on the, on the uh, RPO. 14 yards there on the rush as Banks was in the backfield. Now moves to the near side to the slot. As the back in the backfield is Baker to the left of Carter as he looks to the sidelines for the play. With 8.20 left to go here in the second quarter. It's a 27-3 ball game in favor of North Carolina A&T. The Aggies with a first down at the Norfolk State 45. Carter delayed handoff to Baker. Baker avoids a couple of tackles in the backfield. Picks up the first down and more inside the 30. Down to the 28-yard line. Quinterly on the stop. It'll be another first down for the Spartans. How in the Excuse world, me, for the Aggies. How in the world did Baker get out of that one, Ross? The 5'6", 165 senior gets a huge game as he just slips through the defense. Again, the Spartans have given up 193 yards rushing here today as Carter with Baker to his left. Looks to the sideline again as a t now has slowed the pace down just a tad with 7.30 left to go here in the quarter. Three wide receivers to the near side as Baker gets the handoff running left side. Stops, cuts back inside the 15 as he's pushed out of bounds. At the 10, it'll be a first down and goal for the Aggies there. Well, that time you saw Baker's speed, Ross, got to the outside. Got a huge gain on that run. The Spartans just couldn't contain that edge. It's Baker now with four carries, 51 yards. And A&T with 211 rushing yards here this afternoon. First and goal. As the Aggies with the first down and goal from the 10. Carter. The two wideouts, one split to either side. In the backfield is Baker. Carter, quick pass out in the flat and incomplete off of the hands of Lockhart. Yeah, Lockhart caught the touchdown pass earlier. That time he was open and just looked down the field again and tried to uh, run before he caught it. As 
the Aggies will change up the personnel and the Spartans will counter as Carter will send two wide out to the far side one to the near in the backfield is Baker Leslie and Bell lined up to the far side of the field. Banks, the wide receiver to the near side is Carter. Will keep it. Gets inside the 10 to the 5 before he's taken down by Nyree Quinnelly. Down at the 3-yard line. It'll be third down and goal from the 3. As the Aggies will bring in their... H back or fullback William Simpson he'll line up to the far side of the field the tailbacks going to be Kashawn Baker on his third down and three Carter handed off to Baker running left side and he's going to get stopped in the backfield knifing through is Tavian Blackwell and that'll bring up fourth down good play by Blackwell set a block and got Baker down now it's a tough decision right here for the Aggies. It's like they're going to go for the field goal, which makes sense. Up 27-3. And Coach, Coach Scott talked about that before the game. Just winning the individual battles with 5.30 left to go here in the quarter. The Spartans trail 27-3. As the field goal attempt from the left hash will be about 24 yards for Noel Ruiz the kick is up it is high enough it is up and it is through 30 to 3 is your score 17 unanswered points now for the Aggies media timeout check that 23 23 unanswered points for the Aggies and it's now a 33 ball game with 5 10 left to go in the second quarter we'll take this break on the MIAC digital and NSU sports network Five ten left to go here in the second quarter. Thirty to three is your score. Twenty three unanswered points for the Aggies. And Ruiz back out to kick off back deep. Smith and Talbert for the Spartans. Again, the Spartans had an opportunity uh, deep down in their own territory as the ball they had an interception down on the goal line. Uh, which would have changed things a little bit here in the first half. And A&T has capitalized off of the turnovers from Norfolk State. And the Spartans just haven't been consistent enough offensively here today against this great uh, North Carolina A&T defense. But the Spartans have had opportunities, just have to capitalize. Absolutely, Ross. When you play a team like A&T, the defending champs, you have to capitalize on those opportunities. As Carter comes back out to the line of scrimmage, three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. As the handoff goes to Savage, rushing left side. Not much doing there for Savage as he's ripped down behind the line of scrimmage. You know, maybe is maybe it is that, that they're going to the through you know going towards the wind, but I would I would imagine the Spartans would try to take a shot here with a uh, single coverage on the outside for the uh, Aggies. Jacob Roberts made the stop for. North Carolina A&T makes it a second down and 10. As the pitch goes to Smith, Smith tries to bounce it outside. Nothing doing there for him. As a stop made out on the edge by Joseph Stuckey. That's a loss of about five. That'll make it a third down and 15. Maybe this is the, the opportunity to go down the field, take a shot. Be third down and 15 for the Spartans. Garden keeps Smith to his right. Four wide outs on the field. Two split to either side. As the A&T defensive backs drop back as Carter tries to take off. He's going to get hit hard as he got back to the original line of scrimmage. Stop made by the Aggies, Devin Harrell. The defensive end, it'll bring up fourth down, and out comes the punting unit for Norfolk State. Not too aggressive that time on that on that series. Two runs. And looks like the third down was going to be a pass, but great defense by the Aggies. 
as it's a high snap Richter will get this beauty away and a fair catch taken by Banks at the 32 yard line nice punt there by Ryan Richter and the offense back out onto the field quickly for North Carolina A&T Spartans hold North Carolina A&T to a field goal in their last possession Now they have Martin back on the field, Ross, at running back. As Norfolk State will get the football to start the third quarter. As Carter will send four wideouts, two split to either side. Martin in the backfield. To the left of Carter now in the shotgun. Carter waits the snap. He'll hand it off to Martin. Martin in between the tackles. Big hole there. Still on his feet. He'll pick up the first down. It's a foot race between he and Tyree Givers-Wilson. And it's going to be won by Jermaine Martin. Martin gets into the end zone. That's his third touchdown of the day. That one from 68 yards. Time out on the field for an injured player. As Tyree Givers Wilson is also injured on the play. A 68 yard touchdown run. And now Martin with 187 yards rushing here in the first quarter with three touchdowns. Well, both touchdown runs from Martin were what, one, one play drives for them. Well, two of his three, I should say. And you just see the explosiveness, explosiveness Ross, by Martin. I mean, he's a one-hit wonder. I mean, what I mean by that is he takes one, one cut. And goes up the field, and he's hard to stop once he gets full full steam down the field. Nine carries, 187 yards for Martin. He has a season high of 299. As again, the Spartans just not had an answer defensively for Martin. Or the rushing attack today for North Carolina A&T. Now they're up to 283 yards rushing. With 391 on the day. And Ross, they're over their average. They average 205 yards a game. Leading the MEAC in rushing. And nobody actually has been able to stop Martin this year, Ross. I mean, he's having a great year. And you see, we're getting a first-hand look at how good he is. As... We hope everything's all right with Tyree Givers-Wilson. Pulled up a little bit. Running down that sideline. Hopefully everything's all right with him. He's played well this year for Norfolk State. In that outside linebacker spot. Remember him in high school playing quarterback at Indian River. Now linebacker with the Spartans. As it's now a 36-3 ball game in favor of North Carolina A&T. 33-16 left to go here in the second quarter. The extra point by Ruiz is on the way. It's up and through. And it's now 30 unanswered points for A&T here. It's been a big second quarter for North Carolina A&T. 24 <laughs> points here in the second quarter. Take this 37-3 to three lead. And Ross, they've been, able, they've been able to do it with the pass and the run. Very balanced attack. As the Spartans will As the Spartans will come out. Get set to receive the kickoff from Ruiz. Again, Martin. There with that big 68-yard run. He has had a touchdown runs of 67, 68, and now, and actually two yards here in the early going in the first half as the kickoff by Ruiz will go through the end zone. And the Spartans will come out offensively at their own 25. Let's see what Coach Scott does here. Three, 316, do you want to... Try to go for some points or just kind of 
play conservative, go into halftime and make some adjustments. Three sixteen remaining in the offense back onto the field. We'll see. Aaron Savage back in the backfield. Three wideouts to the near side, one to the far is Carter. Pumps, looks off of James. James makes the catch and picks up the first down. Out past the 35 to the 36-yard line. Nice job there by James and securing the catch and turning up field quickly. Also a good job of sitting in that zone to an open area. Carter found him. And he got some yards after the catch as well. As the Spartans back to the line of scrimmage quickly. Clock moving with 2.55 left to go. Here in the quarter, Carter drops back to pass. Steps up in the pocket. Spins his way to a two-yard pickup to the 38-yard line. It'll be a second down and eight. As Carter will get the call from the sideline. 2.30 left to go. Second down and eight. For Norfolk State, a pickup of about three on the play. Four wideouts, two split to either side for Carter. And A&T will be happy to keep everything underneath as Carter escapes the pocket. They're going to have a flag thrown as Carter gets hit hard after a pickup of about seven out to the 45, but a flag is going to be thrown in the area of the hole. Holding. Offense. Number 70. 10-yard penalty. Second down. Justin read the guilty party there. So which would have been a second down and eight now. A second down and 18. Again, penalties. Just putting the Spartans in long, long yardage situations, making it very difficult, especially with this great Aggies defense. You don't want to make it any harder than it has to be. And right now, A&T just playing soft, soft coverage on the back side with 151 left to go in the second quarter. Just trying to keep everything in front of him as Carter drops back to pass. Looking for a screen. Pass is going to be complete to Savage. Savage with room to run with blockers gets hit from behind. As he gets back. Pass the original line of scrimmage to the 39-yard line. It'll be a third down and seven. There you see the team speed of North Carolina A&T. Savage looked like he had some room to run there. But coming up and making the place Carroll. So it'll be a third down. And seven for the Spartans as Aggie, excuse me, as Carter drops back the pass, eludes a couple of tacklers. Rolls right, looking for a block, gets it, and will pick up the first down as he gets near midfield. Out to the 49-yard line, some pushing and shoving after the play. It'll be a first down for the Spartans. As Carter has done a lot of heavy lifting on the ground here as no one is open downfield with one minute to go here in the second quarter. Well, that's that solid defense we talked about with the Aggies. That time, Carter did play it safe, kept the ball, got some positive yardage out of it instead of trying to throw it and make something happen down the field. Carter will keep Savage to his right. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. As a &T drops eight as Carter looks down the field, has a man. It's Talbert. Talbert brings it in at the 30-yard line. As Kirby is slow to get up, the left tackle for the Spartans. And a stoppage of play. And a nice job there by Talbert of getting underneath that pass and making the catch in the open field at the 30-yard line. Yeah, Carter found his former high school teammate open down the field. Again, the Aggies playing it safe, not making sure anybody gets behind them. As Culberson will check in for Kirby, who walks off gingerly to the sideline. As the Spartans will have a first down and 10 from the 54-yard line. As Carter now 10 of 19 for 92 yards. Spartans with 182 yards of total offense here today. As the clock will run, the two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. It's Justin Smith. Carter 
Drop back to pass again. Steps up in the pocket and loses the football. And we're going to have a flag thrown. As Carter just held the ball just a tad bit too low. We'll see what that flag is going to be. It's picked up by North Carolina NT. We'll see what the flag is going to be. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 94. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So the Spartans dodge a bullet there as a personal foul was called against Justin Cates as he got to Carter the face mask it was called and so Norfolk State will have a first down at the 15 yard line with 40 seconds to go here in the second quarter. I guess that's why Carter dropped the ball. He was scrambling around and got a face mask and the ball came out. As Carter will send three wide receivers to the top of the formation drops back the pass with time steps away looking for Ellington. Ellington with a hand, one hand grab and he gets it to the end zone. Let's see if he gets out and steps out. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds at the one yard line. Nice job of adjusting to the football there by Ellington. Now usually Ellington uses his height. Timeout, Norfolk State. First charge timeout of the half. That time, yeah. Norfolk State will take a timeout. Even though Ellington stepped out of bounds so the clock would have stopped but the Spartans take their first timeout. And I think Coach Scott might want the see if the officials want to look at this here. Carter did a good job of avoiding the pressure there and just lobbed it up. Ellington did a good job of stepping inside of his man. Used his reach, stepped out, and he looked like he was he was out of bounds. It doesn't know where it don't know where he was when he stepped out of bounds if the ball was across the line of across the goal line as there is no review now as they have the opportunity to look at it now and they're going to keep the play rolling here again it'll be a first down and goal from the one with 24 seconds to go you know, you, at, at this point in the game, Ross, you take minor steps. You, know, you get a touchdown here, you know you get the ball in the second half, start to start the second half. That gives you a little momentum going into the locker room. And Again, the game is played four quarters, two halves. You just keep fighting and try to get back into this. Nice job by Carter, making, uh, giving a ball that his player can, his, his receiver can make a play on. Nice job there by Ellington of making himself available as well. As it will be a first down and goal from the one. Carter. We have Savage to his left. Awaits the snap. He'll hand it off to Savage. Savage gets back to the line of scrimmage. Not much more. Timeout's going to be taken by Norfolk State with 20 seconds to go. In second, the second charge quarter. timeout. Norfolk State. 30 seconds. And the Spartans with one timeout remaining. They actually lose a yard there. And again, the Spartans without Tyler McElhaney this week. As he was out with an illness here this week. Also, Kevin Johnson not in the lineup today with an upper body injury. Yeah, two huge losses on offense, Ross. You have Johnson, the freshman from Suffolk, who's had a great year so far. And McElhaney on that outside has provided a spark as well on offense. So the Spartans will have a second down and goal from the two. As Carter looks over the defense, he sends Talbert in motion. Carter awaits the snap. Drops back. Looking right, looking for Justin Smith. Smith makes the catch in the end zone. And he'll get the score as Smith with a nice job of making the play. Over Amir McNeil, the defensive back, with McNeil on his back and the Spartans with 16 seconds to go in the third quarter, or second quarter, get a big play, and they get the football back to start the third quarter, now trailing 37 to 9. That's how Smith uses his size to seal the defender almost like a basketball pick, I mean a basketball post up, and gets the touchdown for the Spartans. First touchdown reception of the day for Norfolk State, 12 of 27 now, 21 for Juwan Carter is... The extra point is on the way, and it's blocked. And it's going to be picked up 
by Norfolk State. And the extra point was blocked. A lot of pressure there coming from the left side of the defense from A&T. So both teams have had an extra point block here today. And with 16 seconds to go, it's a 37-9 ball game in favor of North Carolina A&T. Again, Spartans, you know, you can, you can take a lot of momentum going into the, uh, the halftime break now, Ross, with that touchdown. You know you get the ball back to start the third quarter. So now you can start dissecting your, your, your offense going in, maybe put another touchdown on the board, and then we have, we have a ball game where the defense can come up and stop Martin and company, which has been hard in the first half. But, again, make adjustments and come out in the second half with, with some urgency. And that was a solid drive for Norfolk State. It had a penalty there to keep the drive alive, but Carter did a good job of maneuvering there on that drive through the air. And A&T was playing man coverage down inside the 20, and he beat that man coverage twice with a nice pass to Ellington as well to Justin Smith for the touchdown. As Nardone will get the kick away, and it's going to be low and driven. It will bounce at the 12-yard line. And A&T will take it from there. A lot of them will run over the left side there. And taken out of bounds on the 10th tackle by Nairi Quinterly was Tamon Cook. But A&T will have solid field position as he was taken out of bounds at the 42-yard line. So impressed with the overall team speed of the Aggies, Ross. We talked about it on the defensive line. Um, but you see it on the special teams as well. They have speed all over the roster. And a and will take a knee going into the break. As Cook, excuse me, Carter will line up under center. Drop back two yards, take a knee at the 40. And that will do it for the first half. The first half where the Spartans get on the board in both quarters. But 24 points for a and in the second quarter. Makes it a 37-9 ball game here going into halftime. We'll take a break. You are watching MEAC football on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. Back halftime here at Dick Price Stadium where the Aggies of North Carolina A&T hold a 37-9 lead over Norfolk State. And it's been the rushing attack of Jermaine Martin today. He has two touch he has three touchdowns, 67, 68, and two yards on the day. And he's been the offense thus far for the Aggies as they have gotten out to a big lead over Norfolk State, 24 points in the second quarter. Yeah, I mean, you know, Martin, as advertised, Ross, he had two touchdowns, but he only had one touch. Took it all the way down the field. Those runs were impressive. He used his, his, his strength and speed. And, you know, Bell at receiver, we talked about him also in pregame. Very impressive. He caught a couple passes down the field. So they're, they're very balanced on offense, and they're looking good. The Spartans have to go down the field a little bit more, I believe, in the second half. 15-46 before the start of the second half. Nice finish, though, for the Spartans. They score on that last drive. Juwan Carter I did a good job of avoiding some... Uh, some traffic. Yeah, used his legs a lot. Uh, saw Ellington in that corner to set up the touchdown uh, to Smith. So I mean, they have an they have the ability to go down the field. You want to see Carter try? They've been he's been pressured a lot though, Ross. Going back to pass, haven't had much time. But if he has time, he can pick the defense apart. And you know, Ant not really that exotic. They're playing basic defense. So if the Spartans can mix it up a little bit, you know, we can see some more points in the second half. The blue and gold marching machine for Ant on the field now here at halftime. The Spartan Legion will follow them on the field as the Spartans trail 37 to 9. We'll take this time out. When we come back, we'll have Isaiah Robertson with a very special guest. You're listening to NSU Football and NSU Sports Network. She stays centered with available pro pilot assist. Presenting the Nissan Altima. Impossibly smart. 
Hello and welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. 37-6-9 is your score. Norfolk State trailing North Carolina a and As we send it now to a very special interview, Kevin Johnson with Isaiah Robertson. First of all, now we can know about you, you know, when you first came out of high school, but now you're trying to make a name for yourself. So what was your recruiting journey like and how did you pick an issue? Our recruiting journey went great. Um, I had a lot of a lot of schools come come to my school and see me. Um, and if you came probably like third, like third school that came was in this year, and it was Coach Roberts. And he actually wanted me to play receiver. And then Coach Taylor came, and then he wanted me to play DB. So it was like, which one do I want to play? So I picked DB, and I started talking to Coach Taylor a lot. So that's what made me come in as a DB. Okay. So being part of the um, school's late recruiting class, what were some of your hopes and goals coming for the season before you started playing? One of my goals was to make a name for myself early and get on the map and just find a new family because at my old school, we was very family-oriented. So just find a new family to make big plays for and go off like my mentors and, mm -hmm. and G. They like... They helped me a lot through the process. My coach, Coach Sherm, they helped me through it too. So that's all for real. So your team has really embraced you when you first came here. Definitely. Right. So take me back to training camp. You had a couple of scenes in the backfield with you to learn from, and during the first scrimmage, you made some big plays. So how was training camp, and how was it leading up to that first scrimmage? How was your going through your mind? Training camp for me was rough. I'm not even gonna lie, because it was like it was different. Because in high school we did two days, mm -hmm. so it was like a transition from two days to summer camp, and it was just like. It was rough for me, so summer camp for me, it was just mental. And like I said, Aaron, G, my coaches helped me mentally get there. Ladies and gentlemen, behold the green and gold. Ladies and gentlemen, the Twilight Legion welcomes you back to the H with a drill of Packers and Motion with precision personified to the real thing by the Brother Josh. So, against Montana State, 8-4 that touchdown run, the longest touchdown run in school history. What would that feel like? Uh, how would you describe that play? I didn't even, I didn't even know it was the longest or you know, I didn't yeah, even know that until after the game. It felt great, like, breaking the long one for the first time. It just felt good to get out there and actually get loose to showcase my speed. Right. It was great. Just talking about your speed, everybody knows you're fast, and you ran track in high school, right? Yes, sir. So, is that where you get your speed from, track? Yeah, my coach, um, Justin Byron, he was a great track coach. Mm -hmm. He really put that speed on me for real. He, um, he's now coaching at a college somewhere, right. but he, he really helped me with my speed. So um, how would you like, relate track to football? What skills do you take from track and implement that to football, like training-wise? And See, I was a 400 runner, so like okay. to be a 400 runner, you got to be real mentally tough. Mm -hmm.
Hey, how long is left in this one? Okay. I'm not sure. So, against Montana State, a for a touchdown run, the longest touchdown run in school history. What did that feel like? Uh, how would you describe that play? I didn't even, I didn't even know it was the longest or whatever. Really? I didn't yeah, even know that until after the game. It felt great, like, breaking the long one for the first time. It just felt good to get out there and actually get loose to showcase my speed. Right. It was great. Just talking about your speed, everybody knows you're fast. And you ran track in high school, right? Yes, sir. So, is that where you get your speed from, track? Yeah, my coach, um, Justin Byron, he was a great track coach. Mm -hmm. He really put that speed on me for real. He, um, he's now coaching at a college somewhere, mm -hmm. but he's a, he really helped me with my speed. So um, how would you like, relate track to football? What skills do you take from track and implement that to football, like, training-wise? And... See, I was a 400 runner, so like okay. to be a 400 runner, you have to be real mentally tough. Mm -hmm. So I took my mental aspect onto the field, and it really helped me. So how would you describe your running style? If you had to pick somebody like either in college or professional level, like you patting the game after, who would you pick and why? I like Zeke just because he's he's unpredictable. I, I feel like I feel like I'm very unpredictable. Like it really like I don't really run from tackles, mm -hmm. but I can run from tackles. But I go straight at you too, and I feel like Zeke do the same thing. We do the fun. 2K, Fortnite, Madden, like Madden, Madden, Fortnite, Madden. Mm -hmm. GTA. You got nine twenty? Yeah, definitely. Who's your favorite team? I like the I like the Cowboys up there, mm -hmm. and I play with the Browns definitely. Is the Ravens yet? Nah, Lamar no, Jackson's crazy. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, you So what's your uh, major in school? I'm a kinesiology major. What are you trying to do with that? I want to be a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. um, my friend is actually a business major, so we try to put something together where he do the business aspect, mm -hmm. and I do the physical therapy aspect. We put it together and come up with a business. It's like, like football. Yeah, definitely. Athletes, football. All athletes all together. Athletes all together. Yeah. All right, man. Appreciate taking time out to talk to us today. Once again, Kevin Johnson, fresh running back for the Spartans. We'll take another break. We'll be back on this industry football halftime show. Thank you. Hello, welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. 37-9 is your score. Ross Gordon joined by Wu Bay Gabray. Halftime almost over. Norfolk State will get the football back to start this second half. And if you're Norfolk State's coach, Latrell Scott, it was a 24-point second quarter for a &T. And those were led by mistakes by your team. Self-inflicted self wounds got a got t close to the end zone. It was a couple of one-play drives. As a matter of fact, three one-play uh, scoring drives for a t A touchdown pass and two touchdown runs by Martin. And if you're Norfolk State, cutting out the cutting out the the self-inflicted mistakes as well as uh, you know just trying to be a little bit more consistent offensively against this A&T defense. Yeah, I mean we talked about it in the first half, Ross. When you play a team like A&T, a team that's capable of scoring on one play like they did, you know you have to eliminate your mistakes. And, and you know the Spartans, you know, bit themselves on turnovers and penalties in the first half. And again, A&T capitalized on the mistakes. So the Spartans have to eliminate mistakes and maybe get some big plays of their own to get back in this game. As we just look at this first half again, Martin has been the story for a &T for the third straight week. He has at least three touchdowns. He's got, he had seven, he's got ten touchdowns in his last three ball games, uh, which is incredible for any, but for any stretch. But he had those in just two quarters here, and he split time, and he has 187 yards rushing, here today, which is which will be a nice season high for anyone in the first half, but his season high is 299 yards <laughs> yeah. this, this year that he had right. against a solid opponent yeah. earlier in the year. So again, he has real talent, and he's showing it here in the first half. The Spartans are going to have to do a good job of collecting him in the second half. We look at other scores from around the conference quickly that we see. Howard trailing Harvard at the end of the third quarter, 61-10. And Florida A&M leading North Carolina Central by 7, 14-7. As A&T will get the football away to start this third quarter. As the Spartans will call fair catch. And they will have it at the 25 to start the second half. And we'll see what kind of adjustments 
the offense and Coach Scott made coming out of the halftime. Yeah, hopefully they can try to go down the field and get Ellington and James some touches down the field. They have the capability of going down the field, and you saw Carter at the end of the first half more than capable of going down the field with his arm and his legs. Again, just giving Carter some time, giving it uh, just enough time to get things going. And the freshman Smith will be the starter here in the third quarter. He had a big 62-yard run in the first half, and he'll get things going here to start the third quarter. It's a solid four-yard pickup out to the 29-yard line, and it'll be second down and six. And that's where you want to be, staying ahead of the chains here on first and second down so you see smith what is he like fourth on the depth chart but you see he has the capability of of making big plays as you said earlier he had a big first half play and another big run to start the uh second half carter with four wide outs two split to either side and smith stays in the backfield and smith will get another handoff he gets back to the line of scrimmage he avoids one tackle lowers his shoulders forward for a pickup of one it'll be a third down and five you know if you're at norfolk state you also want to make third and manageable you know, when you have a third down, you want to make sure so you don't get caught in a situation where he has to throw the ball when he doesn't want to. It'll be a third down and five for Norfolk State. Three wide receivers to the top of the formation, one to the nearest. Carter drops back the pass with time, steps up. Pass is going to be complete to Smith out of the backfield. He'll pick up the first down as he gets knocked down at the 20, excuse me, at the 45-yard line. And again, Smith out of the backfield has made some plays. Uh, the freshman in his first uh, consistent action with the injury to Gerald Hewitt has been very, very uh, productive here today. That's Springer to Springer. Them Holland Spring, former Holland Spring teammates getting that first down for the Spartans. Carter back into the shotgun. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Carter will drop back the pass with time. Looks downfield, has Ellington. Ellington can't come up with it as that pass was knocked down in the wind. As Ellington had a step on his man coming up and just keeping his hands high was Antoine Wilder. If not, Ellington would have brought that ball down. Yeah, Ellington has to use his 6'6 frame on that one. Didn't catch the ball at the high point, waited for it to come down, and that's where the defender was able to knock it down because they're the same height at that point. It'll be a second down and 10. The two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far, wind in the face of Carter. Smith in the backfield as the handoff goes to Smith. Tries to break it outside, gets to the line of scrimmage, might have gotten an extra yard there, half a yard. So it'll be a third down and nine. Again, third and long for the Spartans. And they've had difficulty trying to get, uh, you know, moving the sticks on these third and longs. Four wide outs. Again for the Spartans. As A&T plays at the sticks here for this third down. Carter waits a snap as the pressure comes. Carter looks over the middle of the field pass is going to be complete to McDonald. He drives McFarland, excuse me, and he drives forward for the first down to the 45. And again, the tight ends of Norfolk State, when given an opportunity, they have made plays. It'll be a first down for Norfolk State. Absolutely, whether it's McFarland, Williams, or whatever tight end you talk about, if when they're in, they make plays. And that time, the extra effort got the first down for the Spartans. It'll be a first down for Norfolk State. As Carter. It looks sharp on this drive to start the third quarter. He'll send four wideouts in the field as the handoff will go to Smith. Breaks it. Pass the line of scrimmage. Avoids a couple tackles. Still on his feet as he drags tackles forward. And he picks up the first down. That's a huge run there by the freshman Raekwon Smith to pick up the first down as he dragged A&T tacklers for the first. Smith just coming in and bringing energy and, a, and effort. And those aren't, <laughs> those are just plays that you just get from the heart, Ross. Just play your heart out and uh, get some extra plays for the Spartans. And Savage checks in now. That's a 10-yard run for Smith, who has 74 yards. Carter drops back to pass, and he's going to get hit. And we're going to have a flag thrown as well as A&T will get a personal foul as a helmet was ripped off as Carter was sacked. It was ripped off by number 57, Jacob Roberts, in plain sight there as he ripped off the helmet of Justin Red. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, number 57 for pulling players' helmet off. That is number 57's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. Number 70 may remain in the game. Automatic first down. 
And that will push the ball to the 25-yard line. The sack will count as Michael Branch got the sack. And it will be a first down now for Norfolk State at the A&T 25-yard line. Carter drops back the pass. The pass will be complete to D.K. James. James at the 10. James at the 5. He will get into the 5 and looks like he's going to be knocked out of bounds at the 1-yard line. So it'll be a first down and goal at the 1. Yeah, James showing his speed. Kind of took a nice little hit before he, he got to the end zone. But James showing his speed to get to the outside and have an opportunity to get in the end zone. But it's going to be first and goal from the 1. Again, Carter started off slowly, but now has picked it up. Now 155 yards passing, and the Spartans with a first down and goal from the one. James now with his second reception for 35 yards. He has 24 on that last catch. Savage, the tailback. He'll get the handoff running left side, gets stood up at the one. Again, no room up the middle for the Spartans all day. Bring up a second down and goal from the one for Norfolk State. As Carter looks to the sideline again, trailing 37-9, 10-35 left to go here in the second, in the third quarter. Carter will send Justin Smith to his left, Ellington to his right. Savage stays in the backfield. The H-back is going to be Williams. Carter will hand it off to Savage. Savage again trying to back his way into the end zone, gets to the one-yard line. And he stopped again. I can't, Ross. No room at all up the middle for the Spartans. Is the Aggies defense again showing their speed and strength in the middle of the of the line? Third down and goal with ten minutes to go here in the third quarter. Spartans trailing thirty-seven to nine. As Norfolk State will send four wideouts in the formation, two split to either side. Smith, the freshman, back in at tailback as James moves in motion. We'll see man coverage as Carter rolls right, steps up inside the pocket, gets into the end zone for the score. a and sent a lot of pressure as Jawan Carter had to do a lot to get into the end zone, but he does, and the Spartans have scored touchdowns on back-to-back -back possessions now, trailing 37-15. to 15. Well, Carter had to improvise that time, Ross. He looked trying to go for a, a pass on that play, didn't see anything, so he tucked it and used his legs and got the touchdown. As we're going to have... The confirmation from the booth, and it is confirmed. 9.40 left to go here in the third quarter. 37.15 is your score as Anderson out to hold as the extra point is on the way. It's up. It's high enough from Nardone and good. The Spartans now trail 37.16. Timeout taken on the field. We'll take that with them as Norfolk State has cut the lead for A&T to 37-16. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. Helps you stay centered with available ProPilot Assist. Presenting the Nissan Altima. Impossibly smart. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium as the Spartans have cut the A&T lead to 30, from 30 to 37-16 here in the third quarter. Ross Gordon joined by Wubay Gabray here as Ryan Richter gets set to kick off. Again, the Spartan offense over the last two drives have done a good job of getting the ball down the field quickly against his a t defense. And again, the arm of Jawan Carter has been has been the catalyst as Richter gets set to kick it off. Back deep is Banks as well as Cook as it will be taken slowly. And it looks like it will be picked up by Norfolk State as it took an awkward bounce. And Stuart Anderson comes up with it as a t let it bounce, and the Spartans will have it deep in a t territory. Just with the doctor order, Ross, Spartans needing a turnover, and they get it on the kickoff. Special teams again comes as into play. I don't think you're allowed to advance it, so the ball will be spotted at the 24-yard line of North Carolina a t We'll hear the... It will be Norfolk State in football as that one bounced high and Banks allowed it to bounce and thinking it was going to bounce to him and it took a Norfolk State bounce right into the hands of backup wide receiver Stuart Anderson. Yeah, if you're Banks, you have to get on that though. You can't assume it's going to bounce. And, you know, to the Spartans' credit, they hopped on it when they saw Banks wasn't going to go for it. But again, the wind is blowing strangely here in the face of the Spartans and out comes Carter again. Smith to his right, three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far as A&T. Crowds a line of scrimmage. 
Blitz coming. Carter drops back. Looking over the middle field. And pass should be. It's going to be a flag thrown. It was a hold against a and As Smith out of the backfield was being held by the linebacker. Ken Howard. Yeah, Howard saw the mismatch, and he knew that Smith was going to go break open. He had to hold him. Howard it should be holding on an eligible receiver there or pass interference. Pass interference. Defense. 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 Number, 54. Number 54. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Within five yards of the line of scrimmage, the ball is spotted at the, uh, the line of scrimmage there or wherever the foul is. So it's about a pickup of one there. But it will be a first down, nevertheless, with 9.36 left to go here in the third quarter. As a &T showed, blitz and came, and the Spartans burn him. As Carter waits the snap, hands it off to Smith. Smith in between the tackles. Not much doing there. As he picks up one on the play to the 21-yard line, maybe a yard and a half. It'll be a second down for the Spartans at their own 21. Heavy dose of Smith Ross in this second half. The freshman from Holland Springs. As Carter looks over the defense with the second down with nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Two wide receivers to the far side, Ellington to the near side. As Carter drops back the pass with time, pass is going to be complete out to Ellington. Ellington shakes the tackler inside the 15. And gets taken down at the 14-yard line where it will be a third down and one, maybe two, for the Spartans. It was a good route by Ellington. Great Just job of securing the football. It's a low throw. He went down 6'6". Six, six. Tough for him to go down and get it, but he did and got it. As well, again, they back off, and Ellington did a good job of making the play. As it will be a third down and one. Carter was surveying the defense. Savage to his right. Carter drops back to pass with time. Looks over the middle field. Pass thrown behind DK James. And it'll bring up a fourth down. And the Spartans will send out the field goal unit. Again, a crossing route. Just a little off time. The timing was off a little bit for Carter as he had uh, James open in that on that crossing route. And Carter, twice today over those uh, those right has, uh, routes have has struggled a little bit, maybe just trying to aim the ball a little bit. There would have been enough for the first down, but we'll see Nardone from 31 yards out. Out of the hold of Stuart Anderson. The snap is down. The kick is up. It's high enough. It is long enough. It is up and through. So the Spartans get three here with 8-10 left to go. Here in the third quarter, get points on the board downfield, 37-19. We'll take that time out on the field. We'll take a break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Networks. Welcome back to Dick Bryce Stadium as Norfolk State. Now trails North Carolina A&T, 37-19, left to go. Here in the third quarter as Richter gets set to kick off back deep. It's Banks and Cook as Richter. We'll get this one away, and again, it's going to be short, and Banks will retrieve this one at the 16-yard line. Banks tries to bounce it outside, does, avoids one tackle before he stopped up past the 30-yard line at the 31. There, in on the stop for Norfolk State. Special teams ace, Tracer on Smith. And you see Martin back in the game, Ross, for the Aggies, so... If you're the Spartans, your, your main objective is to contain the running game. And Martin's a tough, tough running back to stop, but you have to do that if you want to win this game. We'll see Martin. Actually, Khalil Carter. Flip it out to Leslie. Leslie with a head full of steam will pick up the first down and more inside Norfolk State territory. One play touchdown for AT. be the fourth fourth play fourth one yard touchdown uh play for a and t yeah here this afternoon yeah you're right ross two two by martin and now two passes one play drives for this for the aggies leslie actually has two um has the two play two touchdown receptions that's right he caught the slant for the touchdown and just that rpo 
So Norfolk State comes out, scores 10 straight points. a t on one plate gets six of those back. Ruiz and to attempt the extra point, it's up and through. And Ross, we talked about the team speed. That was a simple out route. And you see the speed of the Aggies as he just went down the sideline and just used his extra burst to get in that end zone. And you have to credit Carter there on the fake as he sold run pretty good there and then got Chevalier Williams out of out of position. It was just a good block on the outside as well by Banks. And then it was just the speed of Leslie beating Quinterly to the edge and a quick touchdown for A&T. And then, of course, you, you know, you, you first the fake to Martin, which froze the linebackers, and then the run by Carter. Then you fake the run, the run by him, and then you throw the ball to his receiver, and he takes it the rest of the way. So, again, the Spartans' defense hit with a big play. And that's something we haven't seen that much of this year uh, for the Spartans. That's going to be the third play of 65-plus for a t here today as Smith called for a fair catch and couldn't handle it. He comes up with it at the nine-yard line. And the ball will be spotted at the nine for the Spartans. Let's see how the Spartans go with this offensive series here. Again, like you said, Ross, very successful in the last couple possessions. Done a great job going down the field, mixing up the plays, giving Carter an opportunity to throw the ball down the field as well. 44-19, your score. a t with the lead. Dorvik State with the ball deep in their own territory. Carter, three wide outs as the handoff goes to Savage. And Savage is ripped down violently there by Jermaine Williams, the defensive lineman, after a pickup of two, maybe three, out to the 12-yard line. It'll be a second down and seven for Norfolk State. And these defensive tackles have played well today for North Carolina a t as the Spartans. Have a second down and seven as Carter. Play action pass is going to be thrown too high. Nice job of knocking that down by DK James as it was actually tipped at the line of scrimmage. James did a good job of getting his hands on the football. If not, that might have been picked off by Najee Reams. Reams had a lot of real estate, a lot of green if he would have held on to that because he could have probably taken that for six if it wasn't tipped. It'll be a third down and seven for the Spartans. Four wide outs, two split to either side. Carter drops back the pass. With time, the pass is going to be incomplete. And we should have a flag thrown as McDonald, as McFarland was hit maybe before the pass got to him. But it will be a fourth down and no flag thrown. A good tight man coverage that time by the Aggies. A little... A little contact before that, but the referees didn't think so, so no flag thrown, but great co great defense by the Aggies. If they continue to play that same defense, they played the whole game. Richter will punt about three yards deep in the end zone. Punts away, and it's a high kick that Banks will call for a fair catch and let it bounce, and it'll take a Norfolk State bounce and be spotted dead at the 49-yard line of North Carolina a t So good field position there for the Aggies. That's one thing that the Spartans have done today, Ross. They've given the Aggies a short field for most of the, the day. And that's why a lot of these one play I mean a lot of these one play drives have been long plays, but they've given the Aggies a short field for the most part when they get the ball. As the Aggies will have it. In the backfield will be Martin. As Carter waits the snaps, he hands it off to Martin, bounces it outside, cuts inside. Big run there for Martin again inside Norfolk State territory, inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line. That Aggie offensive line is just pushing the Spartans back, just giving Martin at least 10 yards before he even gets contact on those runs. As Martin takes a seat, he's over 200 for the day. 
And we'll see Baker back into the ball game. Carter. Play action. Looks out in the flat pass. Going to be incomplete. Thrown right in the hands of Banks. But he couldn't handle it. It's the same pass that went for a touchdown for Carter. I was going to say the same thing. Just opposite side. Same play call. Just not able to connect this time for the Aggies. Showing run. Making the Spartans commit at that uh, slot defender. And had a man open Banks. He just couldn't hold on to it. Four wide outs in the formation two. Split to either side. As Carter looks over the defense, has Baker to his left. The Spartans trail 44-19. As the handoff goes to Baker. Baker with room to run, picks up the first down. So he's taken down by Quinterly. Inside the 30, down to the 28. That time Baker coming in for Martin. A different style back, Ross, more speed. But actually, Martin has speed as well, but a little more of a shifty back, smaller back. But Baker, same results for that running game for the Aggies. Actually, Martin has 199 now. Baker at around 60 yards for the day as Carter looks over the defense. Two wide receivers to the near side, Elijah Bell, lined up to the far side of the field. With 550 left to go here in the third quarter, 44-19, your score. a t with the lead. As Carter will roll right, looking downfield, and he'll take off inside the 10. Gets inside the 5-yard line before he's brought down. Again, that's Quinterly with the stop down at the 4. And it'll be a first down and goal for the Aggies. Aggies just keeping the Spartans defense on their heels, Ross. Just mi mixing up the playbook. With these RPOs, you know, you have to worry about the run. And then now you have Martin, I'm sorry, with Carter running the ball as well now from the quarterback position. Martin, late getting Dixon out formation. Baker's going to be a tailback. As Carter lines up under center, hands it off to Baker. Baker gets into the end zone for his first score of the day. You know, Baker, more, like I said, more of the scat back. Smaller back reminds you actually of, T of Tariq Cohen, who's in the NFL now, and he gets in the end zone for the Aggies up the middle. As again, that offensive line is just pushing the Spartans back. 50 to 19, your score, score here in the third quarter. 502 left to go here in the third quarter, and we'll see Ruiz on for the extra point. As AT now with 332 yards rushing here, 199 from Martin, Carter with 66 yards, Baker with 63 as the Extra point is on the way. It's up and it's good. It's a 51 to 19 ball game. Media timeout taken on the field. We'll take it with them on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Networks. Please smart. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. 51 19. Your score, North Carolina AT, now leading Norfolk State with 5.02 left to go in the third quarter. As Ruiz gets the kickoff away, and Kendall James will watch it go through the back of the end zone. And it'll be a first down and 10 for the Spartans at their own 25. Again, Ross, the Spartans enable, not able to stop the run today with, you know, the run game for the Aggies just chewing up all these yards and, you know, it's you know, offensive line for the Aggies just pushing the Spartans back. And uh, that's why they have 51 points today against the Spartans defense. NSU has run 57 plays for 267 yards. A&T 38 for 508 as Carter will pitch it out in the hands of Savage. Savage bounces off one tackle, but he's hit hard at the 28 yard after a pickup of three. Yeah, Savage is taking some big licks today. And so it will be a second down and seven for the Spartans. Clock moving with 440 left to go here in the third quarter. Three touchdowns for Martin rushing. Leslie with four receptions, 106 yards, two touchdowns. As Carter back in the shotgun, drops back the pass. Pressure coming, and he's going to get taken down. Kenneth Kirby got beat off the edge that time. As the sack 
by Jermaine McDaniel. Ty McDaniel got leverage on the outside. Check that. Sorry about that. And so Kenneth Kirby's on the other side. That was Tyrell Lipscomb who saw that speed rush coming from Jermaine McDaniel. It's a third down and long for the Spartans. It's Carter. Play action pass is going to be complete out to, again, a tough play. Made him going to have a flag thrown as McDaniel, excuse me, as the, it's enough for a first down to Ellington. Ellington has had a big day and we're going to have a flag throw as Kenneth Kirby got locked up with defensive end Devin, Har Devin Harrell. It'll be a first down for the Spartans if the play stands. Personal foul. Offense. Number 77. Fifth, half the distance to the goal. Third down. Kenneth Kirby, the guilty party there. And so what was what the first down? Was now backed up to the 10-yard line, so a third down and 25 for the Spartans. Ellington has played well here today. He has three receptions for 30 yards. He's made some tough catches today, too. RPO just found him over the middle. He did a good job of dragging tacklers for that 14-yard game, which was brought back because of the penalty. As Carter, play action, rolls right. Looking downfield, pass is intended for Ellington. Ellington can't make the catches. He was being held a little bit there by Mac McCain. It'll bring up fourth down. You know, McCain, one of the best corners. He had an ACL injury last year, Ross. Still made first team, all conference. So doing a good job on the outside with the for the Aggies. Really working his way back into game shape as Richter will punt from about five yards deep in his own end zone. It's only his third game back as Richter will get this punt away. It's high, short, and a fair caught will be made. A fair catch will be made at the Norfolk State 39 yard line by Banks. So again, good field position for AT. Get another short field, Ross, for the Aggies to work with. And that's again, that's what we said earlier. That's been, you know. That's been the, the topic of discussion so far, given the Aggies short field, and they're able to capitalize on that and score their 51 points today in the game. As Norfolk State scored the first 10 points of the quarter. The last 14 have come from a and with about 319 left to go in the defense. Back out onto the field for Norfolk State. And again, the Spartans have run 22 more plays than North Carolina a t has today. a t with 508 yards of total offense. Here, though, this afternoon as Banks gets a handoff running left side. Stays on his feet. Picks up seven yards on the play before he's taken down. Speller there on the stop for Norfolk State. Also there for the Spartans is Ricky Thomas. As we have a new quarterback in, Jalen Fowler. Will now be the new signal caller. He keeps Baker to his right. And it's going to be a pass out in the flat. Banks makes the reception. Picks up the first down inside the 25 down to the 24 with 240 left to go here in the third quarter. The Fowler Rester, sophomore Ross. Big size kid. 6'1. I'm sorry, 6'2, 230. Baker now with eight carries for 70 yards. As a and will have a first down and 10 at the Norfolk State 25-yard line. Following the shotgun, Banks to his left. Actually, Baker to his left. Baker hides behind the line of scrimmage, and he's hit nicely there by Nigel Chavis. For the Spartans. Haven't called his name much today. He's usually all over the field. Also, there was Cephas Harden 
Makes it a second down and 10 as Jalen Fowler stays in at quarterback. Looks towards the sideline with 140 left to go here in the third quarter. Baker to the left of Fowler. Fowler awaits the snap. And he'll keep it. Breaks it out to the outside. Has a blocker. Williams tries to force him out of bounds and does. Fowler makes it a second. It'll be a third down now and three. You know, the Aggies still run the same plays even though Fowler's in the game. That time was an RPO. He kept, went far side. Afidi Kingsley now will check in at quarterback on his third down and three. Sean Baker remains in the backfield. 49 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Kingsley awakes the snap. Sends a man in motion. And Kingsley will keep it inside the 10. 15, and he picks up the first down, gets down to the four-yard line. And that could be the final play of the third quarter. As Kingsley... We'll look to the sideline, and that will be the final play of quarter number three. As a t will take a 51-19 lead into the fourth quarter. As again, the Spartans started out the quarter hot, but a t finishes the quarter off with 14 unanswered. And it's now 51-19 ball game as we move to the fourth. And we'll take this break on the MIAC Digital and NSU Sports Networks. Again, we welcome you back to Dick Price Stadium as North Carolina a t leads Norfolk State 51-19. to As... Timeout, Norfolk State. We begin the First fourth quarter. First charge timeout of the half. And before the fourth can get going, there's a timeout on the field. Yeah. Some personnel issues that time for the Spartans, Ross. Norfolk State only had 10 players on the field. They're missing the 11th. And it will be a first down and goal for a t at the four-yard line. Fowler in that quarterback. And it's a 30-second timeout, so the Spartans have two remaining. Again, the defense. For the Spartans today. Struggling to get stops now with giving up 543 yards. The average uh, yards per play, 12.63 yards per play for a &T. As Fowler in at quarterback to his right is Baker. As Fowler will take it in the middle and get into the end zone for the score. Nothing, uh, nothing different. We're going to have flags thrown. for unsportsmanlike conduct and celebration there by the Aggies. After the touchdown. As the score is now 57-19. Nothing different, Ross, with the different quarterbacks in. Just After the score, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, number three. Number three is first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. So the Spartans will accept the penalty on the kickoff. So Ruiz will tee up the extra point. As the Aggies score in the first play of the fourth quarter as the extra point by Ruiz is up and good. And the Spartans now trail 58 to 19. You know, it looks like the Aggies are just, you know, just going through their, going through their bench, trying to try different quarterbacks. 
in different situations and you know nothing different Spartans have their first team defense out there but the Aggies just putting more points on the board right now and uh, what 58 on the Spartans defense today so after the penalty the ball will be spotted at the 20 yard line so Norfolk State should get solid field position with the wind in the face of A&T Again, the ball will be spotted at the 20-yard line. And Norfolk State will DK James at the 25-yard line along with Talbot. As Ruiz gets the kick away, it's short and it's high. And it will be taken by Talbot at the 23-yard line. Talbot goes right side, looking for a block, gets it. As he spins out of a few tackles, gets taken down at around the 43-yard line. That's where the Spartans will start this drive. Decent field position for the Spartans. And right now you're just looking to just get, just to get some drive together, Ross. And you're al almost playing for later in the season just to try to get your team to get, uh, to get some flow and some momentum in this game right now. Carter's still in at quarterback. And it's a hard way to start for Norfolk State. They knew it with FAMU. Finished second place in the conference last year. And a &T, which won the conference last year. As Carter comes back out. Smith in the backfield. As Carter in play action looks over the middle of the field. Pass is going to be complete. Out to Smith. He breaks one tackle inside a &T territory. Dragging the tackle to the 45-yard line. And before he's taken down. As we have some push, put, pushing and shoving there at the end of it. But it's going to be a first down. And again, Smith. Over 100 yards of total offense here today. Hard to believe he was in high school last year. Good side, good looking back. The freshman from Highland Springs, Ross. And for Smith, that's his third reception for 36 yards. That was a 12-yard reception. As Carter drops back the pass, it's going to be a quick screen out to Smith. Smith is going to get hit hard here as he's taken down after a loss of two. It's a nice job of reading screen there by inside linebacker Ken Howard. Again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but the team speed on the Aggies is in full display as they, you know, every level, all three levels on the defense, just showing their speed, especially on that last play right there with the screen. A loss of about three on the play. It'll be a second down and 13. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far for Carter. As Carter drops back the pass. Looking over the middle of the field, pass will be intercepted. And still on his feet for the Aggies as the flag is thrown. As actually the ball is picked up and lost. Treshawn Smith somehow, Raekwon Smith somehow ends up with the football. We have a flag thrown as well. Don't tell me. You can't see how Jacob Roberts lost the football as the pass was intercepted. And then we have a flag thrown as well. That will be one of the most interesting plays you see. Very interesting. Is you know you almost didn't know where the ball was. The ball's all over the place. Players flying everywhere. But let's see what the call is as they see the flag on the field. And officials are discussing it. Norfolk State ended up with the football. A nice job there by just being active by Smith. Oh, absolutely. Just being active. The ruling on the field was a fumble by Norfolk State, recovered by a &T. Fumble by a &T, recovered by Norfolk State. During the a &T return, there was a block in the back, number 93. That penalty is declined. It'll be first and 10, Norfolk State. As it was an interception by Roberts, who then fumbled the football. It will be Norfolk State football at the 45 yard line. As pass was intended for James from Carter. As the ball was 
stripped out leg as Carter looks downfield. Those are balls gonna be complete out to Ellington. Ellington comes up with a nice grab, and then he's taken down by Chris Mosley. You see Ellington, he played 6-6 six, six that time. What I mean by that is he kept the ball high so the defender could not have an opportunity to knock it out of his hands. Good play by Ellington. As the Spartans get a first down. Carter will send two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. As Carter drops back the pass with time. Looking downfield, has a wide open James. Can James run under it? No, as it might have been caught up in the wind there. As James was running down the middle of the field with the post there. And just floated a tad bit too long. And it will be now a second down for Norfolk State. Good look, though, as James has shown the ability to get behind defenders all year. Oh, absolutely. And today he had two opportunities to get down uh, past the defense. Just wasn't able to connect, especially on that one and the one before in the first half. Second down and 10 as Carter drops back the pass with time. Looking out in the flat pass, going to be complete to Savage. Savage picks up the first down and runs out of bounds as we have an injured player as well. Timeout, injured player, and media timeout. a and has got an injured player at the 50. We'll take a timeout as Norfolk State will have a first down with 12.24 left to go here in the fourth corner. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. Rookie. 12.24 left to go here in the fourth quarter as we welcome you back to Dick Price Stadium. Spartans with the first down and 10 after the reception by Savage, which picked up the first down at the NT 34-yard line as Carter drops back the pass with time, now runs out of it. As Carter loses about nine on the play. No time, Ross, for, to do anything with the ball. As Carter went back to pass, and as soon as he looked up, the Aggie defensive line was right in his lap. That's going to be the fourth sack of the day for a and It'll bring up a second down and 19. Again, in pressure with four and five are the Aggies. As Carter drops back the pass again. This time a blitz is coming. It's going to be complete out to James. James on his... Drag route gets pushed out of bounds back at the original line of scrimmage. Nice job again of seeing the blitz coming there by Carter and finding James on the drag. You know, the, what, the receivers, the problem hasn't been them getting open. They're running great routes. Just Carter having time to give them the ball. That time Carter had a, it was a great pattern that time by, uh, by James, and he got open and got the pass and completed by Carter. So it's a pickup of 11 there. So Carter now over 200 yards passing on 21 of 37 passing today. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Now Ellington in motion on this third down and nine. Ante shows blitz again. Carter has time pass is going to be complete to James again. James dances and gets close to the first down marker. He'll be about three yards shot. Almost the same route for off that time by, by, uh, by James as Spartans will have this fourth down and three as again the last couple plays Ante has sent a blitz right up the middle and Norfolk State has done a good job of picking up that blitz and Carter will now empty the backfield three wide four wide out to the top of the formation Carter will have Smith to the left side Carter drops back the pass with time now runs out of it looking downfield flips it up for mcdonald mcdonald comes up with the catch and then loses it on the way down and it will be a turnover on downs as carter had an opportunity and mcdonald fought for it in the air just couldn't come down with it and it'll be a turnover on downs for the spartans looks like he mistimed his jump ross he had an opportunity to go up for it of course carter was running for his life trying to get an opportunity to throw but mcfarland just mistimed his jump had it in the air and just lost it 10-11 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Carter C there tries to escape and does. And pressure comes. Had McDonald but just had to float it up because of which way he was going. And a nice job coming back and making the play by the Aggies. Joseph Stuckey, the linebacker, or Rover, did a good job of coming back and, and getting a helmet on the football. Again, A&T. 
will hand it off. This is the time of the jet sweep. And solid yardage on first down. Enough for the first down as that was Tremaine Cook. Picks up 12 on first down out to the 39-yard line. Jalen Fowler still in at quarterback. With under 10 minutes to go here in the fourth. As Fowler will send two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Fowler awaits the snap. Look over the defense with five seconds on the play clock. Sends a man in motion. And same play, but losing the football going the different opposite way was to main cook. It'll be a second down now for the Aggies as they lost the four yards on the play. One of the rare times that, that the Spartans got in the backfield and disrupted a play. And that's been a point of emphasis uh, in the coming weeks, Ross, is getting pressure not only on the quarterback but the running game as well to try to cause some turnovers. As Fowler in the backfield, split backfield in the shotgun. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. As the handoff now to the new back in the backfield was Darius Graves. Graves slips up at the line of scrimmage. Doesn't get much. It'll be third down and long. Graves, a red shirt. Junior transfer from UNC Tar Heel Country, Chapel Hill. It'll be a third down and long for a &T. Fowler stays in the shotgun. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Baker back into the backfield with Fowler. Long snap count, delayed handoff, and Banks will make one man miss, stays on his feet, as then he falls down past the 40 as he's tackled by Nyree Quinterly, who's had a busy day here today as he leads the team in tackles with now his 15th tackle of the day. Absolutely, Ross. He's been all over the field chasing Martin and, and Bell and all the running backs and quarterbacks that the Aggies have thrown at the Spartans. As Talbert comes out. To return the punt with 7-11 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Michael Rivers out to punt. And again, a &T doing a good job of letting his clock run as Talbert will call for a fair catch at around the 22-yard line. Out. And that's where the Spartans will take over with 654 left to go here in quarter number four 58 19 your score we'll take a break on the MIAC digital and nsu sports network with available pro pilot assist presenting the nissan altima impossibly smart welcome back to dick price stadium 58 19 is your score norfolk state trailing a &T as slipping coming out of his break was smith carter was looking for smith threw it behind him it'll bring up a second down and 10. you know those slant patterns are, are, are timing patterns and you know, that time smith kept going in the slant carter thought he was going to stay and that was an incomplete pass as carter will come back to the line of scrimmage now 22 of 40 on the day Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Smith in the backfield as Carter drops back to pass. Looking downfield, looking for Smith. Smith tries to high point it with one hand, and he brings it down, and a flag is thrown. That's amazing. What a play by Justin Smith as he high pointed the football, came down with it. There for the first down at the 42, and the flag was thrown as well. Pass interference. Defense, number 39. That penalty declined. Result of the play, first down. 
Justin Smith, you've done it again. Is probably a top five play here today. What a catch with the right hand. Went up high and picked it off out of the air. Great catch there by Smith. As Carter again drops back to pass. Looking downfield. Escapes the traffic. Runs and gets pushed out of bounds after a pickup of about three. On the Blake. Right. Nice job there by Juwan Carter escaping traffic. And they're going to give him credit for a pickup of about six. Yeah, Carter again keeping the play alive. Using his legs to get away from a potential sack. Gets out of bounds and stops the clock. It's, it's running, but it's uh, first down for the Spartans. 6-10 left to go here in the fourth. 58-19 is your score. Carter drives back to pass. Looking downfield to play. again. He has a man wide open. That's Ellington. Ellington gets taken out of bounds at the 30-yard line. And again, Carter using his arm. Uh, make plays downfield. The ball will be spotted at the 29-yard line. As that was a 19-yard completion from just from Jawan Carter to Justin Smith. Just goes to show you, when you give Carter some time, Ross, he can pick the defense apart. And the receivers are running great routes today as well. 66 yards receiving now for Ellington as Savage gets the handoff in between the tackles. Savage breaks the tackle. Picks up nine on first down. Nice blocking up front there for Norfolk State. A rare occasion when Savage run. As the ball will be spotted at the 21-yard line in the Spartans. We'll have a second down and two as Carter gets it off to Savage. Savage bounces it outside. And he loses a yard. And bring up a third down now for Norfolk State. And Savage at that time wasn't able to get inside. He tried to bounce outside. But again, that, that Aggie team speed negates that run and takes Savage down for a loss. As the Spartans will have a third down and three, probably four down territory. Here at the 23-yard line, Carter drops back to pass. Looking over the middle, pass will be incomplete. In and out of the hands of Ellington. Ellington's had a great game tonight. Just that time didn't see the ball through the whole way. Of course, obviously, the Spartans will go for it here on fourth down. Again, 24 43 for Carter. Three interceptions. He's been sacked four times. He has one touchdown. 0 for 1 are the Spartans on fourth down. Is Carter. Awaits the snap. Drops back the pass. The pass is going to be incomplete. He was looking maybe for Justin Media Smith. Timeout. And a timeout will be taken on the field with 432 left. 58 19 is your score. AT with the lead. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. Center. With available Pro Pilot Assist. Presenting the Nissan Altima. Impossibly smart. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium as we are back to action. Score is 58 19 in favor of North Carolina AT. And on first down, we see a quick rush by Kashawn Baker. Baker picks up eight on first down to bring up a second down and two. Baker with his 10th carry now he's over 80 yards 84 to be exact as A&T will run the clock here with 15 on the play clock clock moving with 355 left to go here in quarter number four Fowler stays in at quarterback Baker to his right and Fowler will hand it off to Baker. Not much doing there for Baker as Brian is there, but he will be pushed forward enough for the first down. And the Spartans have their backups as well on the field defensively. Check that the quarterback is Kingsley for a and You'll have a first down and 10. 310 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Kingsley with Baker to his right. Baker has 86 yards on the day on 12 carries. As Kingsley keeps. 
In between the tackles he goes, picks up four on first down before he swallowed up. Dale Craig there for Norfolk State. Also there for the Spartans is Junkum. Kingsley, the third quarterback in the game for the Aggies today. As Kingsley awaits the snap. Ten seconds on the play clock. Kingsley gets the snap. Hands it off to Baker. Running over left side. Baker. Solid gain inside Norfolk State territory. As he's pushed out of bounds. After the pickup inside Norfolk State territory. Close enough for... 100 yards for Baker. It'll be the second. Aggie over 100 yards on the day. Again, the different style of backs. They just come in with different attributes. All, all successful today for the Aggies as the running game just kicked into high gear. As we saw a full display of what they can do on the ground. 13 for 101 for Baker. 406 as a team for 406 as a team for AT. As Kingsley awaits the snap, hands it off to Baker again, running left side. Baker dropped behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose two yards, and he's now under 100 yards, back to the 50. So Baker loses two yards, so he's back to 99 on the day on 14 carries. And AT back to 406 with 50 seconds left to go here in the quarter. AT will have to run this final play. And Kingsley will await the snap and gets it. And he'll keep it, bounce it outside. He'll stay on his feet. It will have a flag thrown as Kingsley picks up the first down as Bryant was hit on a blindside block there by Rio Clater, the offensive lineman. And so that will back A&T up. Unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, number 62, 15 yards penalty from the spot of the foul, second down. So the clock will run. It's number 62's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. The clock will run. And a does not have to run another play. as the game clock will expire before the end of the play clock and the final score will be a and t 58 norfolk state 19 here today from dick price stadium as we look at this ball game a t in that second quarter uh, really did a good job of putting distance in between themselves and the spartans yeah, I mean, this full display, Ross, of, of what a and able to do, you know, defending champs. We talked about, you know, back-to-back -back champions, uh, 15th in the FCS poll. And, again, they, they showed why they are the, the, the best of the best in this uh, MEAC conference. Jermaine Martin today with 199 yards uh, rushing to go along with three touchdowns, including a long of 68. He also had a 67-yard touchdown run on the night. Carter also had three touchdowns passing on 9 of 14. Uh, attempts 176 yards on the day Juwan Carter 24 44 he had one touchdown three interceptions 252 yards here on the afternoon North Carolina AT ran for 410 yards as a team to knock off Norfolk State here today 58 to 19 that's your final score here this afternoon so for Wu Bay Gabre I'm Ross Gordon as A&T improves to 4-1 overall 2-0 in conference play Norfolk State falls to 1-5 0-2 in conference play A&T 
will be on the road next week as they take on Florida A&M. And Norfolk State will travel to Howard next week at 1 o'clock p.m. Again, so for Wubaker Gabre, I'm Ross Gordon saying so long from Dick Price Stadium where the final score is North Carolina A&T 15, North 58, Norfolk State 19. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. To our radio audience on Hot 91, we'll be back after this with more on the postgame show after this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Networks.